Hello there. This is Marianne and you're listening to Random Sage. This is my fortnightly podcast um, and you will usually catch me on a Friday Australian time, Sydney time, uh, usually in the morning sometime, but I've been delayed this weekend because I have been uh, babysitting my grandson, Travis, and it, he's been an absolute joy. And in fact, yesterday uh, I had intended to um, record later on in the afternoon, but I attended his first birthday party and what a treat that was. Really puts things into uh, perspective um, when you're dealing with such a, a beautiful little soul, uh, such as my grandson. He's a quadruple Piscean, well, has a stellium in Pisces. His uh, son and uh, Mercury and Neptune are all conjunct. And he has Saturn, thank goodness, Saturn in uh, Pisces, which will keep him on the straight and narrow as he, as he gets older. All right, on to today's uh, topic. I want to talk about the media's coverage of ex-president Donald Trump. Um, I, I guess because I do such deep dives on US politics uh, and have done since the ex-president was uh, elected in 2017. I understand the danger, the clear and present danger that he presents to the US in the main and also to the rest of the world. His deep ties with Russian dictator Vladimir Putin are, uh, are real and have been documented. And in fact, they are so real now that he and the uh, GOP or the MAGA, MAGAs as I like to call them now, the Make America Great Again bunch, they no longer deny their Russian ties. In fact, some of them are quite proud of it. I've noticed over the last couple of years that the trolls that I get on my channel um, are they will come, they will swarm around when I do a negative reading on the ex-president. And then they swarm again when I do a negative reading on dictator Vladimir Putin. I don't see a lot of uh, difference between Putin and Trump in terms of their moral or lack of moral compass. The ex-president is what I would call a gutter snipe. You only need to tune into his rallies <clears throat> to understand the degradation uh, at which he orates. He was talking uh, today uh, about Fulton County DA, Fonnie Willis, and he was basically... I'm not going to repeat his words, but basically saying that her name was similar to uh, to someone's backside. And then he started uh, taking, uh, making fun of her relationship with the lead, former lead prosecutor in that case, um, Nathan Wade. And as he was doing that, being lewd about the uh, district attorney, Willis, the crowd were laughing and jeering. Not only was he a gutter, what I call a gutter snipe, really quite a disgusting gutter snipe, swearing throughout his, his speech at his rally, speaking like a 10-year-old in a schoolyard a bully bully 10 year old the worst one in the in the playground speaking like that not only when was he doing that but the crowd were also encouraging <clears throat> and lapping it up so why was he speaking like that well because he is a gutter snipe but he was also speaking to gutter snipes why do i say that because they laughed when he denigrated people. They laughed and cheered when he was being lewd. 
and they thought he was a tough guy when he swore. Now, I want to say this is the nationalistic Christian evangelist hero trying to delay a court case in which he's been charged multiple counts of trying to cover up election fraud. In other words, he paid off a porn star because he had had an affair with her when his wife had newly delivered their son. He would was to be found in the nightclubs with her and then back to some hotel for illicit sex. This is the man that the Christian evangel evangelicals see as their hero. Now back to the media. The media coverage of the ex-president and his ties with Vladimir Putin, who, by the way, is threatening the world with nuclear explosion. He thinks nothing of invading another country, a sovereign country, and wanting to reform the old USSR, the Soviet Union. He thinks nothing of taking countries back. He thinks nothing of bombing preschools or play centres or hospitals. Just as Netanyahu, Israel's Prime Minister, thinks nothing of massacring tens and tens and tens of thousands of innocent, innocent Palestinians and now starving them to death. This is even worse than the infamous, tragic Warsaw Ghetto. And yet here we have the Israeli Prime Minister and his government, extremist government, talking about ethnic cleansing. But how does the media cover all this? You would think that they would cover these people as the pariahs that they so clearly as evidenced are, ah, and yet that's not the case. Every time the current president of the United States makes a gaffe or stutters or forgets something, it's front page news. And yet you can tune into any rally of the ex-presidents and he, President Trump and hear him slurring his words, unable to get a word out, forgetting a word, mispronouncing a word, leading psychiatrists are talking about a cognitive decline. I certainly read around about, I don't know, six, eight months ago that there was that cognitive decline I intuitively read him and that it was actually going to get worse. And that's exactly what's happened. Yet I can open up the Washington Post on any day and you will see a comparison of Biden and Trump. And you would be expecting to see some reference to his criminal indictments, to the fact that he led uh, an insurrection led a riot, whatever you want to call it. He was calling for them to take back our country, to march on the capital and to fight like hell. You would think that the media would cover this candidate a little bit different, but no. The comparisons are always about Biden's age, Biden's gaffes, Biden's unpopularity with certain demographics, the Muslim uh, voters, Biden's this, Biden's that, Biden's failure at the border, and then you will hear Trump then covered as a 
normal candidate. The other day on 7 News in Australia, there was a poll released, one poll, which put the ex-president ahead of the current US president, put Trump ahead of Biden. They didn't cover that story by referring to Trump as a 91 criminally indicted president, a president who is up on, you know, trying to obstruct uh, the certifying of um, the 2020 election, someone who lies repeatedly about the election results. There was no preamble to their coverage. They simply said, former President Donald Trump is ahead in the polls with the current president, Joe Biden. And then they showed the graphics of the poll. That was their news story. As though he was a normal candidate. And this happens time and time and time and time again. I have a special place in my heart. I'm being very sarcastic here for the New York Times. They CNN continually has one of its journalists, Maggie Hageman, Hageman on to, to tell us all the snippets about the ex-president Trump and what he's thinking and doing down at Mar-a-Lago and what his campaign are, how they're positioned, what their plans and strategies are. And she's held up on CNN and at the New York Times as someone with special access to the former president. I have to do a double take because I cannot believe it. Are you for real? This is the person that's up on multiple criminal indictments for taking top secret <laughs> classified documents for leading this insurrection, trying to stop the certifying of the 2020 election, who admits he wants to be a dictator, who half the time is bat shite crazy. It feels like I'm watching some kind of bad reality TV, not even reality TV. I think it's a, I don't think you could make this stuff up if you tried. It is bizarre. It is absurd. And many of us here uh, in Australia are saying, how is this person still walking around free? <laughs> People died on that day on January the 6th. We all saw it with our own eyes. A woman was crushed to death. Another woman was shot and killed trying to batter, batter ram her way through the windows into the Capitol as police were being pounded with flagpoles, pepper sprayed, hit with fire hydrants. One fellow was hit, one police officer was hit uh, very uh, heavily over the head with a fire hydrant, later went on to, to pass. The autopsy couldn't determine whether that blow caused his death, but I can tell you this, he would have been here had January the 6th not have occurred same as the other officers who went home, two or three of them, and committed and unsubscribed from life in the night or the days after January the 6th. It was a tragic, reprehensible, abhorrent day that shocked the world, and here we are, three, nearly four years later, and that 
that ex-president who led the stop, stop, so-called stop the steal, such a blatant, fraudulent way to overturn a fair election, wants to do it all again. And the media are covering it like it's 2016. They're covering him as a normal candidate, whatever a normal candidate is. And they are slamming the current president and giving this one, the ex-president, a pass. You'd have to wonder what on earth is going on. I want to talk a little bit about Alex Alexander Smirnov. He is the Russian asset or Russian agent, deep ties to Russian intelligence, who led, uh, well, who lied about Hunter Biden, the president, and the president's son's dealings in Ukraine, which led to a special counsel investigation and led to this tawdry scam of a impeachment inquiry by the MAGAs in the Republican-held House of Representatives, or I should say House. Okay, so House in Congress. It turns out the FBI was suspicious about Smirnoff in 2020. And there are real questions now being asked. He's been charged with lying and fabricating evidence about the current president and his son and their supposed dealings in Ukraine, all a lie. Smirnoff, deep ties to Russian intelligence. He's now said, where did he get all that stuff from? He got it from Russian intelligence. Putin, Putin and Trump. Well, Smirnov took a payment of 600000 from a firm that can be traced back to Dubai to Trump's dealings in Dubai. This is not the first time that Trump tried to bring these allegations forward. So this is this this is his plan. He did it once while he was president. He's, he's done it again, aided and abetted by the maggers, his maggers, his people in Congress. But the FBI and the the DOJ, if they were suspicious about him in 2020, why did it take so long? For them to charge him. David Weiss, as the US Attorney for Delaware, would or should have been, and later David Weiss was made the special counsel by Merrick Garland, Biden's DOJ head. They should have been aware that there were deep, deep doubts about Smirnoff's credibility. But instead, instead, David Weiss, as the US Attorney for Delaware, kept an investigation open on Hunter Biden. And as special counsel, he was made special counsel in June 2023. Oh, sorry, I, I should correct that. He was made the special counsel to investigate Hunter Biden in August 2023. The news broke that Smirnoff was lying. I think it was in February 2024. So why did it take the FBI, led uh, by a Trump appointee, Biden kept him in place, the US attorney for Delaware, who would have been aware or should have been aware of the FBI's suspicions about Smirnoff, and then when he became a special counsel, investigating Hunter Biden with suspicions already 
floating around the inte U.S. intelligence circles, intelligence and legal circles, he keeps that investigation ongoing. 2020, they first suspected that Smirnoff was lying about the Bidens. 2020, it's now 2024. And look what has happened over those last four years. How does the media cover this? Certainly not on page one. Certainly not as a running investigative campaign type story. What would they be campaigning for? The media campaigning for the truth? <clears throat> no, that's that's not what they're doing. They are still covering when Biden refers to Ukraine as, I don't know, <laughs> Israel or something like that. He mixes up a word. They're still covering that sort of stuff. And, yes, the New York Times and their star reporter, Maggie Hageman, Hageman is still sitting on that small midget seat on CNN, CNN talking about Trump in Mar-a-Lago and what the campaign team are worried about. What's uppermost in their minds as they go in? to this campaign. It is indeed bizarre that there seems to be a blanket of apathy over the American media about the clear and present danger that the ex-president actually presents to the US and to the world. Why do I say the world? Well, his deep ties with Vladimir Putin, who doesn't even bother to deny it anymore, Putin is threatening the world with nuclear weapons. When are you going to wake up? When the radiation dust falls upon you? When the US becomes a dictatorship and your media outlet gets closed down? As a Trumpian in Ohio, when once your vote is secured, then there are maybe no more elections held. And then you maybe don't like something that he does and you find that, wow, my right to protest and make a change in government has been taken away. I want to ask in this reading, What would what would Trump and Putin do? Would Trump allow Putin to uh, to completely take Ukraine? Would President Trump allow Putin to completely take Ukraine? Would Trump allow Putin to take over Ukraine? Now, something flipped up there and we get the Wheel of Fortune. If there was enough in it for him. So we have circles of support and celebration, the three of cups, unity. It is the card for unity. And then we have manipulation and manifestation there would be incredible unity between these two. They would both be in control and wield control, the emperor card. As president, the US and Russia would become firm allies. The fool is in the past. The fool is a new start. That's what 
the world thought in 2020 that there would be a new start, but this is just a continuation of the Trump president years. In fact, leader of Hungary, a dictator himself, Viktor Orban, visited the ex-president at Mar-a-Lago. I was shocked at that. A head of state coming into the country, visiting an ex-president who is a candidate for the presidency, without reference to the current president or the White House or any kind of international diplomatic protocols, the head of state of Hungary waltzes into the US and goes and has a tate-a-tate with the ex-president current candidate for the presidency. Did anybody else think that was odd? We have a crossroads crowning this reading. Do you feel the crossroads? I certainly do. We have the hanged man pausing, pausing something, sacrificing something. A lot of anxiety about this, this question that I'm asking right now and the environment around the night of Warren's quick moving nights telling me that Putin would annex Ukraine, install, I haven't got to the outcome yet, but so far I'm seeing sacrifices, control the emperor being in control and now the soldiers moving in to annex. The much what, like what they did with Crimea. The wheel of fortune in the hopes and fears. What is our hope? Putin that would then have access to Ukraine's resources, agricultural, mineral, fossil fuel resources. And there we have the lovers at the end, as, as an outcome here. The lovers. And there we have the Knight of Swords. What is the truth about, about their relationship? One of mutual interest. And the King of Swords planning, strategizing. And there we have it. These are all yes cards that I'm seeing here. Trump would hand Ukraine to Putin on a platter. Of course, it would be dressed up like, oh, yeah, well, we're just sending our soldiers in to maintain law and order and rehold elections. And you, you would hear all the dressing up. However, it would be a takeover base of the pack we have the queen of pentacles the resources of ukraine we also have the tower card and once that was accomplished then what happens to nato the ex-president has already said he would pull the u.s out of nato he would tell putin well, he's threatened to pull the the US out of NATO and he said he would tell Putin to do the hell whatever he likes to the countries that aren't supposedly paying their NATO bills, which is a false a false representation of their funding model. They play a they pay a percentage of their gross domestic product. It's not a bill they pay. Let's ask. Would Trump pull the US out of NATO? If Trump was president, would he pull the US out of NATO? 
If Trump was president, would he pull the US out of NATO? The Knight of Pentacles. And the Knight of Rods, the Knight of Wands. Soldiers would be withdrawn from key areas in Europe. American soldiers would be withdrawn from key areas in Europe. Defending oneself. And here's the plan. The plan has already been mooted. Queen of Cups crowning this reading, something let out of that cup, some secret to be revealed. And there's the King of Swords, which was the outcome. There's a plan and a strategy between Putin and Trump. If I'm elected, if you help me get elected, I will pull soldiers, American soldiers, out of key positions in Europe. Perhaps it's in the Baltic countries. I don't know where the US troops are as part of NATO. But they are an integral part of protecting NATO countries. And there's our magician at the base of the pack. Manifestation and manipulation. So while he may not pull American com America completely out of NATO, We'll continue this. He certainly has a plan to restructure, restructure America's role in NATO, the past, the page of swords in the hopes and fears that can be a treasonous spy in the camp type of energy. The outcome, unfortunately, is yes. Yes, he would. In the beginning, he would pull troops out. And then as time wore on, this is all part of plans and strategies, he would completely pull America out. You'll hear him talk about this. You'll hear him talk about this on the campaign trail. He'll make these very, very, very under the table type of, a, a, he will allude to this. His narrative will follow this kind of thinking. America needs to look after America first. And at the base of all of this is what's in it for me. What's in it for Trump? The very thing he loves more than anything else. Money. And Vladimir Putin reportedly or arguably one of, if not the most wealthiest man in the world, has plenty to give to Trump. People often ask me on my chat on my revealing light channel. I have another channel in case anyone's interested. Why you are so against the ex president? I shake my head, and I say, "Why are you so for him? Why and how can you still support him after everything?" If you still support him, then you are as bad as what he is. The media. If they only covered a little bit of what we're talking about as breaking stories, as investigative campaigns with, with, with assertion, if they went after this aggressively, I would be heartened. 
but they are not. So it is up to all the independent publications, all the strong thinkers of this world, all the real honest-to-goodness patriots in America to make sure that this man, Trump, is never elected again as President of the United States because the world will be remade brutally if he is elected again. You're listening to Random Sage. Thank you for joining me. I'll be back again with another podcast in a fortnight. Thank you. Bye for now.